my, my impression was, looking back at least, is that that was one of those books that we weren't meant to understand, so nobody ever talked about it. And now here I was kind of being flooded with all this new information and wondering what to do with it. How do I reconcile what I was raised with and now what I'm learning? And so I was wrestling with it. The, the best compromise I could come up with, and I'm kind of the king of compromises. I mix butter and margarine together and you know I do all sorts of things. But what we did for years was we attended an Adventist church on Sabbath and we attended a Lutheran church on Sunday. So we went twice a week. But it wasn't really, that didn't settle anything. It was just a way to kind of, uh, kind of in, a, in at least in a fashion, be true to the new truths that I had learned and also you know, make it more comfortable for Janice, obviously, because that was her background. Uh, but also not feel like I was kind of betraying my family legacy because those thoughts were running through my mind. And then, as, as God would have it, we had a little interruption in that routine because I took an assignment in Saudi Arabia. And as you probably know, there are no churches in Saudi Arabia. So there's really no way to worship as a, as a group there except for the system that was in place when we lived there, which was um, Protestants met together once a week in someone's home, and then the next week it went to somebody else's home, so you wouldn't attract attention by a lot of cars always being in the same neighborhood. You had to be careful about those things. And then there was another similar group for the Catholics. They met separately. And we did that for four years, because that's all there was. And then when we came back, we had children who were 10, 11 years old by then. And uh, I kind of came to the conclusion that, well, when we talked about this, we said we can't keep going both Saturday and Sunday. This, this is going to get confusing for the girls. They're going to wonder, what, what should I believe? Or, and why are we doing this? Because nobody else goes to church twice a week. So I have, to, I have to be honest and say, at that point in time, I had a weaker conviction to stay in the Lutheran tradition than I knew my wife had for the Adventist tradition. I, I said, this is going to be too great a sacrifice for me to ask her to give up what she knows about the Sabbath, especially and ask her to just worship with me on Sunday, just because that's the way I grew up. So I said, okay, we're just going to worship on Sabbath, and we'll go to an Adventist church from now on. And that's what we started to do. Um, we did that in, well, in, we were living in Pittsburgh after we had the Saudi assignment. We, for, a, for a time, we did still attend both churches, but then we, we cut that cord with the Lutheran church. And I started worshiping only at, at the Adventist church. And during that time, well, actually, I've got to go backwards again. Um, when, we were in, when we were in Saudi Arabia, I was in communication with my dad, and I was telling him what I was learning and asking him some pretty tough questions. And he would write me long typewritten pages of defense for the Lutheran way of looking at things. And I would read those, and I'd say, there's nothing here. <laughs> it, it's, it's so lame. I mean, I wouldn't say that to his face, of course, but it, there was just no substance to it. It was all just tradition and, you know, well, we, we look at this one verse, and, you know, that, that, can't, that, that leaves it more wide open than you're saying it should be. And I just couldn't buy it. Uh, it did not make sense to me after everything else I had learned. And then, from Pittsburgh, we were told that, well, that office is going to be closing. We need to find another place for you. And they had asked our family to move to New Jersey to a different sales office. I was in sales at that time. And we thought, wow, New Jersey, how exciting. Apologies to anybody from New Jersey. 
I didn't know much about New Jersey, but they allowed us to make a trip over there to see what it was like. I met my new boss, and I, I knew who he was already because just in the organization, he was somebody that was known to me. We came away from that trip, all of us, just thinking, this is not right. This, this is not what we should be doing. And I didn't know at that point whether they were going to have any backup plan for me or whether that was it. Because they were going to close where I was currently working. But we just, we said, God is, God is laying this out that this is not for us. So I said, no, we're not going to, we're not going to make that move. And they said, well, there's one other possibility um, because a lot of the company functions are moving to Houston, Texas. So we could make a position down there available to you, but other than that, there is nothing else. And folks, I have to be honest, <laughs> that wasn't any more exciting than New Jersey. <laughs> I feel differently now, of course, but at that time, Texas was probably the last place I would have chosen to, to go. But we did. We came here, and within a year, that office in New Jersey was shut down, and everybody was let go. And I'm still here, retired now after a lot more years of, of service to the same company. And I mean, having come here and been a member of this church for a lot of years, um, the, the fellowship and the warmth that we felt here was so welcoming. Um, and finally, a couple of years after we arrived here, I finally said, I'm out of excuses. <laughs> and I was baptized in this church by Pastor Spiva. Um, and I guess I, I think back to that parable of the sower with all the different kinds of soil or material that the seeds would fall on. I'm not sure where I would classify myself. I, I, I think the seeds had been growing all along, but I maybe needed a little more fertilizer than most. Um, that's the best analogy I can make there. And this church has so many opportunities to, to be involved and to serve. And all I can tell you is that for my family, it's, it's been a blessing to be involved. I encourage you. Um, I know we have visitors come through here quite often. There are more Bobs and Janices coming through these doors week by week. And I'm, I'm confident that with the same kind of love and support that you gave us, that this church will continue to grow and be a light to this community and beyond. Thank you, Bob. Um, as many of you know, today is Bob and Janice's last day here with us. Did, did you all know all this about Bob before? Not everyone, maybe very few people. Well, you know, I've heard the story and God never loses a battle. Not even with a Lutheran. <laughs> you know, Bob preached one sermon here in this church. And I've been trying to get him to preach another sermon. And I've tried and tried. But Bob, I got you up here. <laughs> I got you up here. That might be the closest I could get to it. But thank you for sharing that. Because I think those testimonies <clears throat> is what causes us to grow each day. Is what causes us to recognize that God never leaves us alone. Even though we might take some bad turns sometimes. And trust me, I know about those bad turns. I took quite a few in my life. But thank God he never left me alone. You know, once we become a light... You never want to put it out. Because once you put that light out, it's kind of hard to get it restarted. 
So even when you take the bad turns, keep that glow going. You know, Christians should be like a boat. We need to be on that water. We might be tossed and turned and pushed around. And that's the world that we're in. We're going to have all these distractions. We're going to be tossed and turned and pushed around. But never let the water into the boat. Never let the world into your life. Because even a little at a time is going to become a lot. And a little at a time is going to take you down. Just like it will take that boat down. So I want to ask us this morning to make that commitment to God. That we are going to be the light of the world. We're going to be the salt of the world. We're going to be the ones that are going to make the world more attractive. We're going to make Jesus taste better to the world. We're going to be the light of the world that shines on that path. Don't blind the person with the light. But illuminate, illuminate the path. You know, um, I think it was... Um, John Maxwell that said, man does not live by bread alone. Sometimes he need a little buttering up. So I just want to say that because sometimes when we shine the light, we shine it in the other person's eye and it blinds them, it turns them off. Make sure you shine it on the path. You might need to do a little buttering up sometimes. And I just ask each one of us this morning to make that commitment that we will be faithful to God. We will be that light bearer. We will be that salt. And as we have encountered Bob here, and he has seen the light, and I think Bob's life, Bob has done just about everything in this church, Sabbath school class, just involved. He keeps shining that light. Bob, thanks for the example that you've said. And now I'm going to ask Bob and Janice to come out here for just a second. Hey, Janice, you're not going to get away that easy. Remember, I'm in sales. If I don't get it done one way, I'm going to get it done another. <clears throat> I just want to share a retirement blessing. Bob didn't tell you all, but he just retired after 44 years working for the same company. Is there anyone in here that's even worked close to that? 44 years. Bob and Janice, you started on this journey so many years ago, and now it's time to leave behind dear friends you've come to know. You sought divine direction and a heart to do his will. Your work became your passion, and you used your skills well. Don't let the highest standards for yourself and others too show in I'm sorry. You set the highest standards for yourself and others too, showing honor, pride, and dignity. They saw the best in you. A rags to riches story need not be your bottom line. The priceless things we gain in life often come from the divine. So don't waste one more minute wishing for things that might have been. Rather, watch the seeds you have planted grow and feel his peace within. We pray God keeps you safe and well wherever you may turn, surrounded by your loved ones, living out the dreams you've earned. And in the quiet of your heart, May you hear God softly say, My good and faithful servant, I'm so proud of you this day. The church that you came and got baptized is proud of you guys. God bless you. Amen. <clears throat> I'd invite our song leader to come up and have our closing song. <clears throat>
Let us stand together as we sing our final hymn, 338. responsibility as light bearers for Jesus and that we live that out in our life every day regardless of how tossed around we are he's got a blessing for us and I would ask you all again to go and continue reading chapter 5 of Matthew continue on from verse 16 17 because that's really how where the rubber meets the road that tells us how we need to live our lives every day. It goes in detail of how we need to live our lives every day. But this morning as we leave here, just remember, you are a light bearer, and light attracts people. And who do we want that light to attract people to? Jesus Christ. Our kind and great God, we want to thank you again for the Sabbath. Thank you for the opportunity that we can be together with light believers to lift our thoughts and our praises and our thanks to you, to lift our petitions to you. Lord, as we leave here today, we ask that you'd help us to just feel your presence in our life every day, regardless of what the situation might be, that we know that you are there for us and you have a great reward for us. We ask, oh Lord, that you help us never to lose sight of that. Forgive us where we make mistakes. Forgive us where we make and take those bad turns in life. But Lord, help us like David to recognize those bad turns and to reach out to you because you're waiting on us. You're waiting on us like that good father in the prodigal story, always looking, waiting. Help that our lives each day will be lived with you in tune with ours and that our light will reflect the path to you. Strengthen us, use us, and help us all to look forward to your soon return. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.